All right, so this presentation is, gonna, is called Healing Begins with the Gut. And even if a cancer patient comes to us, many times they're questioning why we're dealing with the gut when they have brain cancer. They don't have colon cancer or stomach cancer. Why do you have to deal with the gut? So um, I think I titled this presentation Some Simple Things That You Could Do to Help Heal Any Disease. This is important. So. Your gut is really your first line of defense against pathogens as well as uh, your first line of problems that you can start with. So well, let's go back to that slide first here, the basis of disease. So it starts with your stomach, well it actually starts with, your, with you chewing your food and digesting your food, but many pathogens that you deal with with all sorts of diseases and certainly with cancer begin as foodborne pathogens. And it has been said, Mike made a comment today about your pH and your pH is so important. He's talking about systemic pH. We want to have, uh, we don't want to have acidic tissue. Cancer could grow in acidic tissue. Cancer actually produces acidity at that, at that cancer site. But you do want acidity in your stomach. So your stomach needs to be a very low pH, needs to be a very acidic environment. When we lose that acidity in our stomach, we lose the ability to kill foodborne pathogens. So acidity in our stomach has a purpose. We chew our food, uh, ptalin is secreted by our salivary gland, helps break down some of the carbohydrates. We swallow that food. The hydrochloric acid in our stomach helps break down some of the carbohydrates and some of the proteins before it goes into the small intestines. Also, the HCL in our stomach helps kill any pathogens. And what we're going to find when we're talking about cancer a little bit later today, uh, H. pylori is a big player with cancer. So how do we kill H. pylori? Well, all of us are exposed to H. pylori maybe even every day. So how do we kill it? It's killed by the action of your stomach acid primarily. So why don't I get an H. pylori infection and you do? Has to do with the level of your stomach acid. So we need to have a good secretion of stomach acid. Maybe you could say one of the worst drugs ever on the market are the acid blockers. That's arguable, but I would probably vote for that in the top 10 for sure. Acid blockers decrease the, the stomach acid secretion, thereby, oh my gosh, my tummy doesn't hurt anymore. I get this acid reflux, so that must mean that I have too much acid, we think. So we're going to take Tums and we're going to take Rolaids or we're going to go to Prilosec or something like that that's going to block the stomach acid production. And what does that do? Makes my tummy feel better. But it causes way more problems. So usually when I have acid reflux and my stomach hurts after I eat and I'm burping up some acid, that's really a sign of hypochlorhydria, a too little stomach acid production. So that the food is sitting in the stomach, there's not enough acid to break it down, there's not the signaling molecules that tell it to be released into the small intestine because it isn't being digested, because I have a decreased HCL production, so then what little HCL is there gets gurgled back up into the esophagus and then I get this heartburn formation. Well Tums takes care of it, but it's actually making the problem worse. Also, I increase the pH of my stomach so I'm not digesting my food, so I'm sending food into the small intestine only partially digested and that causes all sorts of problems. I'm not killing the pathogens that come along with the food, so now I'm introducing a whole bunch of pathogens into the small intestine that never should have been introduced into the small intestine and now my enzyme system that's taking place in my small intestine is even more taxed. Not a good thing. If you have stomach issues, you probably have hypochlorhydria. Matter of fact, you could argue that maybe everybody has hypochlorhydria. Well, why is that? How can everybody have this thing? Is this a disease? Why does everybody have it as a new thing? Well, the problem is, is we have an American diet that has all sorts of additives, colorings, flavorings, all these different things that block stomach acid production. Matter of fact, if you go back on our website, I think I have several videos that talk about the the whole ins and outs of how stomach acid is produced in your stomach and what blocks it. And it's 
big part of it is our American diet with all the different things that we have in it that affects that. Then we get into the small intestine. And then it even gets in the small intestine and the large intestine and it even gets more interesting because we have all these little beasties that are living inside of us that are helping us. So this is called your normal flora or what the new term is, your microbiota. So your new, this flora that lives in your gut has hundreds of millions of different organisms that work symbiotically with us. That means they help us absorb different nutrition, they help us digest different things, and they help fight infection. So this is your second line of defense against foodborne pathogens. So H. pylori is actually, there's certain strains of H. pylori that are normal in your flora. So in the right balance, everything in its right balance, even E. coli. Oh, I had an E. coli infection, I was really sick. E. coli is normal in your flora, in the right balance. So remember, when we talk about health and sickness and even things that I'll talk about today, we talk about, oh, this is bad and this is good. But in reality, there's not really bad or good. It's bad or good when it gets out of balance. So is inflammation bad? Oh, yes, inflammation is bad. Well, wait a second. A Th1 response to kill off a pathogen produces inflammation. That's not bad. Well, I guess it's not bad there. So there's not so much bad or good, it's, it's the concentration that we're really talking about. It's that imbalance that we're talking about. An imbalance in our gut flora, we could say, causes mm, a huge percentage of disease. At least it's present in a huge percentage of disease. Whichever came first, we don't fully know, but this is a big, big player. If we don't rebalance the gut flora, we're gonna have all sorts of problems because the gut flora does a lot of things to keep us healthy.